So, what do you do for fun? For fun? Um, <clears throat> well, sometimes I like to sit in my car for like two hours and listen to the same song on repeat like 500 times until I can't stand it anymore. Usually like whatever I'm obsessed with at the time. Um, right now it's Out of Time by Rolling Stones, you know that song? Mm -hmm. It's, um, it's a really good song. It's like, it's just got a good melody and a good story, you know, because it's not just baby, you're out of time. Baby, it's baby, 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 you're out of time, which I think is, you know, brilliant because it wasn't just, you know, one baby would just be like, baby, you're out of time. Baby, baby, baby. It's like, I want, I'm trying to get through to you. You know, I'm trying to make a point. And I think that's brilliant. And I just think art isn't what it used to be because... You know, now songs just feel very trite. Like, so many times I listen to a song, and I'm like, get to the point. Get to the point of the song, you know? I just I find it frustrating. There's so many songs that are like, you're a bad man, you're a bad man. Like, it's like, but where's the story here? It just feels a little trite. And I just wonder about art these days. Like, are people making art because they have something to say? Or are they making art because they feel like they want to say they made art? You know, like... Are they doing movies because they want to be like, I did a movie, or do they have to do the movie? You know, I feel like art should be something where it's like, you have to say this thing. You can't not say it. And, I, and then, I, you know, it's like I read a book recently. It was about a woman who just slept for a year. She just slept, like, the entire year, and then she felt the need to write a book about that. And I was like, okay, I mean, it, you know, it just seemed like a self-indulgent book. It was just all about sleeping, and it's like, if you're going to do a book about sleeping... You know, you have to have some sort of angst or, you know, it wasn't Catcher in the Rye angst, it was just angst. It was just sort of like self-indulgent angst. It felt very meandering, it felt very like, uh, whiny. Like, that's what I feel about art now. It's like it's kind of whiny and there's no depth to it. I don't know, maybe I'm a little old-fashioned or something, but I just, it's not really my thing. And then I wonder, like, did Jack Kerouac, like, was, like, what if Jack Kerouac was born in this day and age, you know? Like, what if he was tweeting, you know, his whole creativity away? Because he's a good tweeter. I mean, I know that's not him tweeting, but he tweets, you know, his tweets are good. And what if he was born in this era? Would he have just tweeted forever instead of writing on the road? Would he have done his big creative thing, or would he have just wasted it away? Would he have just sat in his car tweeting all day? <clears throat> I just wonder about that. And then I wonder if bugs are ever suicidal. You know, like, do insects ever get sick of being an insect? Like, is a moth sick of being a moth? And if they were, I would understand it. Because if I were an insect, I don't think I would want to live forever. You know, if I were a moth, I'd be like, I'm sick of being a moth. I'd look for a, a light bulb to crash into on purpose, probably. You know, and then I wonder if when humans are suicidal, maybe they feel like an insect. They just feel trapped. You know, and why? Who are we to say you you shouldn't take your own life? If if people say take your take your life in your own hands, but don't take your death in your own hands, right? Take your take your life. Well, well that's hypocritical. If you're going to say take your life in your own hands, you should also be allowed to say take your death in your own hands, or to, you know, do whatever you want as long as you're not hurting somebody else. So I think about that. And then I think about you know, my therapist told me that he thought I had sort of this clawing desperation in me and I thought that was not an attractive term you know he said you have a clawing desperation and I thought that's I don't like that term at all you know like burning desire is a good way to say it but clawing desperation like nobody wants that and and then I thought well you know how do, how do I get rid of that right who wants that and he said, I don't know if I could picture you without it. It would be like the Energizer bunny without the battery. And I thought, well, that doesn't sound bad. Just like a chill bunny. Just a, a bunny that hangs out on the couch and just chills out. Doesn't sound so bad. And then he said, we're out of time. And we'll pick this up next week. And then he said, but I've been sending clients texts just to remind them what we talked about in the last session. And so he sent me the text, clawing desperation. I was like, I don't want to see that in writing, right? It was like a text, clawing desperation. And I said, has anyone ever gotten that before? And he said, uh, Marilyn Monroe. It's a good answer, Brian. It's, you know, he can be funny sometimes. 
And then when I finally get enough courage to sort of face my own moth-like existence, I get out of the car and I go in and I get a blueberry bliss smoothie, which is my favorite smoothie. And I drink it on the way home, listening to Rolling Stones at a time on repeat 500 times. But that's just when I'm in like party mode. What about you? Same. Really? Even the insect part? I saw a crab walk into a campfire once. That really stayed with me. Wow. Would you like to have um, somewhat passionate yet slightly emotionally detached sex that temporarily fills a dark void inside of ourselves and then never speak to each other again. here.